inflammation and diseases. What's the relationship between them? What do they share with each other? Is inflammation the root cause of diseases? Is inflammation behind every disease? In this video, we're going to figure out exactly that. And stay tuned until the end because I have a bonus tip for you guys to lower your inflammation by changing the food we eat daily. Okay, so let's begin. Hi guys, I'm Tommy. I'm a human nutrition student and researcher at the university. And my job in this channel is to provide you the best information I learn and consume. And uh, with, my, with my curation, I share to you the most important things you need to know. So you probably heard about inflammation and uh, maybe the relationship the inflammation has with the diseases. We're going to start this video talking about what's inflammation. Okay, so the definition of inflammation, to make it very simple, is the activation of the immune system. An activation of the immune system is inflammation. Okay, so you have to know that there are two types of inflammation. The acute inflammation, which is in where we activate our immune system in a short period of time, and the chronic inflammation, which is where we activate our immune system for a longer period of time and we maintain that activation. So there are differences between them because one is beneficial and the other one not. So the acute inflammation is the beneficial one because acute inflammation will help us repair our system by activating those defenses. For example, if I go to the gym and uh, I get an injury, I am going to acutely activate my immune system, so inflammation starts to happen in that part, that area that was damaged, to get repaired. The arachidonic acid, which is a pro-inflammatory acid, is going to increase the surface area of that part that was damaged to make it less motile so it can repair even quicker. And that's a good sign, that's a good inflammation. But why does a inflammation exist? Well, because we need to repair and uh, defend ourselves. Because without inflammation, we cannot repair those tissues that have been damaged. And uh, we cannot defend ourselves from pathogens that come from the exterior. For example, the pathogens that can come from eating, we need to defend against them. And uh, we have a barrier, the epithelial barrier, that blocks those pathogens from entering our blood circulation. That barrier is in uh, the intestines, the intestine barrier. And sometimes, depending on what we eat, we can increase the permeability of that barrier and more pathogens can enter our body. So we need a defense for that to stop those pathogens and have those defense mechanisms right there to attack as quickly as they can the pathogens uh, that can enter. Okay, so what happens when we suffer chronic inflammation? So chronic inflammation, we said it's the constant activation of the immune system. So how can we achieve that state? Well, I started talking about pathogens that can enter with our diet and the intestine barrier and its permeability. So if we eat, for example, gluten, Gluten has a gliadin. Gliadin is a um, part of the gluten that can interact with the zonulin. Zonulin is a molecule which is part of the tight junctions between those cells of the intestinal barrier and uh, the interaction with gliadin can open the space between those cells and create the leaky gut syndrome. So that's activation of the immune system because more pathogens are going to get in the bloodstream because of that openness of our barrier and uh, 
as more pathogens are going to enter, we need to be ready with our defenses right there after the, the wall to combat those pathogens and limit their actions so they cannot enter our systemic circulation because when uh, we absorb nutrients, they first go to the liver and then to the rest of the tissues. I hope you understand what I'm saying. So as you can see, if we maintain these levels of high pathogens in uh, every time we eat, because we, for example, have a poo barrier because of maybe a diet high in gluten, chances are we're going to get the chronic inflammation. And chronic inflammation is the root cause of pretty much every disease. Because here's the thing, when we are defending ourselves from that attack that occurs every time we eat in the intestine and our defenses are all put together there because it's the major entrance of pathogens for our body. When we feel another attack from behind, for example, some cold weather or some windy air, or maybe just too much pathogens ingested, for example, from drinking some water in the lake or in the sea. And I'm just putting examples in here. Uh, but when we have too much attacks, that's when our defense mechanism starts to fail because they are already defending against something that we are not really feeling because the activation of this immune system is permanent, so we do not feel different, any different. Wow. But when the amount of pathogens starts to raise even higher, that's when we feel sick and we start the disease. I've read many studies that say that the gluten ingestion is correlated with autoimmune diseases. And that makes a lot of sense because of the thing I just explained to you. I hope you understood it well. And here comes the bonus tip for lower that inflammation. So it, as we talked about chronic inflammation and the relationship between gluten and uh, chronic diseases, well, you should already know that gluten should be avoided, but also the ratio between the fatty acids we ingest should be monitored because in our diets we have pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory fatty acids. The pro-inflammatory are the omega-6s and the anti-inflammatory are the omega-3s. The ratio between them should be 1-1 so to have a proper balance but we have a problem because our society our diet, our modern way of eating has 25 one the ratio in favor of the omega 6s which are pro-inflammatory. So this contributes to the chronic inflammation and that's something we don't want. So to lower those numbers, those ratios, we need to get rid of some high inflammatory foods such as seeds. And with seeds, I mean not only seeds, but also grains, because grains are seeds. And uh, some legumes, because legumes are seeds. And also nuts. So, to make it simple, just don't overdo the seeds, the grains, especially those ones with gluten, and uh, try to limit the nuts and the legumes. That will certainly help you lower your inflammation and improve your health. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and uh, learned something new, another perspective on the nutrition, the other point of view of nutrition. If you consider this information is helpful, please like this video, subscribe to the channel and uh, click on the bell icon down below to get notified every time I upload a new video.